So today we're going to make tissue box covers. So there's our tissue, here's our box covers, and uh, they just come right on out, just like that. So um, this one I made previously, and this is made with the Minte Lady, and super, super easy to make these. In the tutorial, I will be using this paper, which is the Chow Bella, and it's the frozen paper, or frozen roses paper, actually and uh, they make great little Christmas gifts or decorating. Now one thing about these is that you can make a tissue box cover for every season. Uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, this is more of a Christmas theme here, and every day. So this one I like with the lady because it does have cut aparts and paper that's like every day and it kind of goes along with that vanity um, look. So that is what we're making today. Let's move on into the materials list and these are super easy, they're fairly quick, and you don't need that much paper. Let's get into the materials list here. And I showed you previously the one that I did with the Minte Lady, and it's absolutely beautiful. So if you're not familiar with Minte, it looks like this. Very pretty. Today, though, what I'm going to be showing you is with the Chow Bella Frozen Roses. And this paper is just amazing for a holiday theme. And uh, I'll be selecting two sheets out of this. And it's just one paper pack. And I think there's only, what, uh, 12 double-sided papers in here. So this, I can do several holiday-themed tissue box covers. And I can do them in different ways to make them look uh, all a little bit different, but with the same type of theme. Very pretty paper. So one of these. You'll need one sheet of cardstock, and I am just, it doesn't matter if you're using 65 pound, 80 pound, or whatever you have, and I'm going to be using black. It will get covered up, so if all you have is a bright pink, you can use that too. For the main construction, you are going to need one full sheet of 12 by 12 chipboard. Now, if you have scrap chipboard, look to see if you have some pieces that are salvageable. So also you will need, if you don't have any, you'll need a second piece, but you're only going to need a small piece off of this. So if you have no chipboard, get two sheets of 12 by 12, you'll use one full and then part of your next one. You're also going to want a standard upright tissue box. Other things that you're going to need is of course you're going to need glue and about 3 8 inch score tape. And there are the reason why I'm using score tape and I do recommend it is you will find out in the tutorial of course, but I recommend to have a little bit of score tape on hand and then we're also going to be using uh, glue. You're going to want a scoring board and a paper cutter. You will want to have a craft knife handy and a cutting mat. You'll want a fresh blade in there because we do have to cut a little bit on our chipboard. Your bone folder or scoring tool, some scissors, a ruler I think I said, and a pencil with an eraser. That's going to be handy for you. Alrighty, let's begin. Not much to this. This is going to be so quick and easy. Be sure to download the free PDF of the materials and the pre-cutting guide and scoring guide. And we will review those in the video, but it's, it's helpful to get you all ready to go and so it's a quicker process. So let's start building our tissue box cover. Let's go over our pre-cuts. So on the pre-cutting guide, 
it told you to cut on your chipboard four pieces that were five inches by five and a half inches and we labeled these sides. So what you might want to do is looking at these that say five inch by five and a half on the top we're going to be five inches wide and we're going to be five and a half inches tall. So once you have it there, I want you to put top. This is going to help you so that you don't accidentally put these on wrong. So again, you want to be five inches wide, five and a half inches tall, and we're just going to write top on each one of these. Now this doesn't mean this is the top piece. This is your side piece, but when we're putting these together, I want you to have top at the top of your chipboard piece so that you know that when we place these all together. Okay, then we had one piece that was five and one eighth by five and one eighth, and this is our top of tissue cover. So this is gonna be sitting at the top. We're gonna to set that off to the side. That's the first one we're gonna work with. We also had, with our cardstock now, we had cut four pieces that were one inch by five and a half inches. And all we did with these is we laid these so we were one inch across, and we just scored each one at a half inch right down the middle and we labeled these sides. So these are our side little hinges that are gonna hold our pieces together. We then cut four pieces that were one inch by five inch, and we labeled these top. So we did the same thing. We laid these on our scoring board, we were one inches across, and we scored each at a half inch, right down the middle. And these pieces are going to be our hinges to hold our top piece down. Okay, we can set all of those pieces off to the side. You're done with your scoring board. Here is the top of the tissue cover, the 5 and 1 eighth and 5 and 1 eighth. So what I'd like you to do is just turn it over. I want you to take your ruler and I want you to put it at the corner up here and the corner down here. This is our first move. And what we are doing is we are trying to find the center and this way will make it much easier for us to get that little oval shape drawn in. If you have a die or a stencil actually because you're not going to be able to die cut really through this chipboard unless you have some heavy duty die but you can put an oval in here and like draw around it for me I don't have any oval stencils right now so this is how I'm going to attempt to do this once you have your middle okay and you put a little dot in the center what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line from here to here straight. For me though, I, I, I could go like this and get it straight by looking to make sure that this is even and I can draw or I can measure to the center over here and draw. So I'm going to give it a try and try and get this even through the middle. It does not have to be exactly precise but it it helps if it is. So there's one. I'll turn it and I'll do that again. I'm trying to get it as even as possible. So this is what you should have and there's your middle point. Okay with your ruler what you're gonna do is from that middle point you're gonna measure over one and one quarter inch just kind of make a mark on your line. Over here you're going to do the same one and one quarter inch. Okay, so you've got two lines now on the same line. They are one and a quarter inch from down from the middle and from the top. Now we'll go on this one and what we're going to do is line up 
the zero of your ruler and go one inch. And we'll do that over here too, right on that line, one inch. Okay, now let's go to one of the cross and you're going to go one inch. Now this is just a guide to help us to get our uh, to get our piece to where it's easier for us to make an oval. It does not have to be perfect. We're going to do that over here too, one inch. And one inch over here. So right now this is what you have and you can see how you have made dots around to make it almost like an oval. So what I like to do is if you take your score tape, now this is round so all I'm going to do is place the side up here and the inside, line it up with one of my lines and I'm going to come over here to this and I'm going to bring it so it lines up and I'm going to bring that up. So as you can see here is a line, side of my score tape is here, my other line and then there's a line right here. I think you can see that, I'm not sure. So for me, once I have that, I'm just going to draw that little portion. And it, like I said, you don't have to be exact, but it's going to help. I'm going to do that over here on this side. From this here, I'm going to bring it to try and create that oval look. And it, it ain't going to be perfect, but it's going to be good enough for what we're doing here. And I'll draw this side. Whoops, I got a little crazy. Hi, Tanner. I'm just going to erase that. Okay, I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to take the side of this, line it up here, the side here, and right here. So they can try and keep me. Otherwise, you can do it by hand. For me, that's really hard to do. So I'm just going to stick it in there and kind of help it along. And I'll do it over here. If you have a stencil, it's so much easier if you have something that is oval. But I do not. So now I have somewhat of an oval, as you can see. That is my way of trying to hand do something and... Uh, I wish I had a stencil handy to where I can do that, but I don't. This is where you are going to use your craft knife, and you'll want a good blade on there, but you're just going to cut out and around. So we'll begin here. And my first pass is pretty slow here. I'm just kind of not trying to cut all the way through. I'm just kind of making that groove so it's easier when I come back around. And I'm going to let the knife do all the work for me. Okay, I've made my first pass around. Now I'm going to keep in that groove and keep cutting around until I can pop this middle piece out. Remember, you can always clean up your edges once you got this middle piece out. But once you get that, uh, the paper on and what we do with it, it should be okay, even if it's a little bit off and it isn't quite perfect. So I can feel I'm getting through now my third pass. On your pre-cutting guide, I also gave you the pre-cuts to your decorative paper. And if you're wanting to make the same exact as me, then what you'll want to do is, I will show you what papers I'm going to use, but honestly, anything in, the, in your paper pack will work for you. Alright, this little piece here, we're just going to set that off to the side. So on our pre-cutting guide, it said that we were to cut two pieces of decorative paper at 6 by 6. So in my paper pack, I have this one has the little lantern and this and I am going to cut this right in half at six inches. Now at 
the other two are going to be cut slightly different. So I'm going to cut this at six inches. And then I'm going to cut at six inches. So I have my two six by six panels. Okay, now what we wanted was a six inch by five inch. So I'm six inches this way already, so I'm going to cut this at five inches. There's five, so I have this. And then I'm going to flip this around because I want to get this image in there. And I'll cut this by five. Okay, those were for our sides. Now for the top, I'm going to be using this print. And I believe I said to do that, we'd start it off at five and one eighth by five and one eighth. And so for this, I want to get this corner out. So I'm going to cut that. My blade is right here, by the way. There's five and one eighth, and five and one eighth. And I'll put this. So there was one. That's my top. Now I'm going to flip this over because we're not going to see the underside, and I'm going to write top on mine. Okay. We also needed a four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths, and this was labeled as under the top piece inside. So four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths, and this is what I'll have the image here. So I'm going to flip this over and put under top. So here is my top piece, and you'll notice that it fits nicely. Set that off to the side. You want your four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths right now. So what you're gonna do is just center that right on your piece as best you can. Then you're gonna hold it in place. Now you're really not gonna see this piece. I included this piece just to kind of clean up the inside of the tissue box cover. So we're just going to put it over and we're going to draw that. Okay, so I've got my hole here and I'm going to cut around that. And you can clean it up later, but honestly, this is just to, to finish off the inside. So it does not have to be perfect. Let's see. There we go. Okay, we'll just stick that off to the side. It is time to grab our top piece. Now we're not going to cut this one, but we it would be a good idea if you just lay it right over the top of your chipboard like this. So have the image you want up facing you and just draw. So you can if you need this as a reference, you have it. You may not need that, but I found that it's a little bit easier for me if I do just draw that on the bottom, okay? So we'll stick that off to the side with these because these are our last pieces to place. Here's our cover, yay! And those little pieces that we cut out, hang on to them in case you make a mistake and you need to redraw. The first pieces that we want are the one by five inch top. And we have our cover here. And we're just gonna fold on those score lines. This is real simple and we'll need our glue. I think the most time consuming thing is done when we had to cut. Other than that, it's gonna go pretty quick here. So for this, we're gonna add some glue. Hello. We're going to add some glue. Well, <laughs> we're trying to add glue, right? <laughs> okay, glue. We're going to add it to one side at a time. Come on, you. Okay, so we have it on one side. That side 
all we're going to do is we'll just place this and we're going to center it in between so you're going to have a little bit of your chipboard on each side but what you want to do is once you have it down pull this so that it's like this okay and then we're going to burnish that down that one's in place we're going to keep going around here and we only want one side and we're just going to stick it and we'll maneuver it, leaving ourselves that crease. You should be able to go like this and it should set you correctly. Now, I'm not worried about any glue seeping out, to be honest, but you should be able to go like this with your sides. This will make it so much easier. Okay, let's keep going around until we get all of these top ones on there. Okay, so this is what you should have. You should be able to come down right on that crease like that. We can set this off to the side. We're going to grab our five by five and a half inch side. So each time we do one of these, this is going to be at the top. So it's pretty much going to be hinged together to where it makes a square. Well, you get the meaning here once we hinge them all together. So that's why I said top, because if you get one of these on the wrong way and you hinge it, guess what? You're not going to match up. So that's, that's my precautionary move because you know what it's early in the morning for me <laughs> and who knows what kind of errors can be made when you are still waking up so a one by five and a half inch sides we're going to do what we did before like with the other hinges and we're just going to fold on those okay grab one of your sides and we are going to just do one hinge side at a time. Okay, so here's my top. And I am going to hinge that on. And that should fit top and bottom. Make sure at the bottom your paper doesn't go past. But you're just going to get it on there like this. Kind of like what we did before so that it's able to go. Okay, let's grab our next piece. Now we'll flip this over. We're going to get glue on this side. It's a very easy process. Now I am going to place this down. Here's top. Here's my top. I'm going to place this right next to the other chipboard lining up and in that groove there. And then all I'm going to do is pull this up on the sides and just kind of use your fingers to get it there. Now once it's down, then you can open it up because it's in the right position. But don't, don't just glue and place it down because you won't be able to do your thing. So as you can see, it creates its own, when you do it like the way I showed you, it creates its own spacing so you can bring in the side and it's nice and flush. And on the outside, it looks like this, as you can see. Okay, next piece, I'm just going to do half. We're going to keep doing this to connect them. All right, so make sure you are uh, looking at the outside, which will have your hinge. Here's top, there's my glue, and I'm going to match it up top and bottom. And I'll just bring that right on in so that this goes on correctly. I'm not going to worry about that glue right now. Okay, so we have that. We're going to turn it over and we'll add glue in here. Okay, so here is the top. Here's the hinge. It's easier for me to flip it around. Here's the top part. And I'm going to match up, and you'll know you're doing it right because your chipboard will match up. I'm going to stick it right there, and I'll butt it up right next to that chipboard, and I'll bring up the side. 
and kind of smooth it out. Once it's in its place, you can open it up now and burnish and it will create that same little spacing. So we could go like that, but that's not the way it goes. We have it to where it's gonna be just like this and it's gonna be nice and stiff. So that's the inside, that's the outside. Let's grab another hinge here. Okay, place it on. So there's that. I'm going to flip this over. Here it is. Here's this one, and it just goes right in that groove, right up against. It's here on the outside. Okay, so we're looking at the outside again. Here we go. Here's the outside. Match it up. All right, so I'm just gonna turn this over. These, This piece here is gonna go right in there. So let's get our glue on that hinge. And it's gonna go the same way, except for I'm just gonna bring this over. Here's the inside. Our outside, we will put it right in that little crease up against our chipboard. Make sure we're matched up, top and bottom, so we're not lopsided. And we will press that over. And so far, your box should be pretty sturdy. So I'm just going to help that along. So there is the box. Okay. It's time to get this on. Now, one thing is, is really quick, grab your piece, kind of lay it on top, and pull your sides in, and it should all come together nicely. So you can add your glue on all your pieces. Your little It's going to be easier now if we put the glue on all of these at once. I think I'm pretty good. Again, I'm going to lay it on here and I'm going to make sure while the glue is still wet that it hits the sides and if it needs to come over a little that's where you can know because you're pulling in your sides and you just kind of go like this until it gets there on all sides just kind of lightly pull it in okay I have mine like that and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put my hand inside and help it push out well so I have something on there to help that grab. And up here, make sure that comes where it's supposed to be and over. Yep, now my box is where it needs to be. Whoops, this one. This one did not quite do what I wanted to do, but it's still good. Still going to make my box. As long as it hinges on, we're good. All right. So the first two pieces that we're going to lay is our two six by six. Now, when we do, here's my bottom. We're going to keep that down. We want to have the top at the top. Six by six. If you were to lay this down, you will notice it's going to be uh, taller than the top. That's perfect. And if you center that, you're going to have sides that are wider than this. That's exactly what you want. So this one's going to go on this side. And don't do it yet. I want to just show you. And I have this one that's going to be on the other end. And we are going to wrap this stuff around. But this is where the score tape is going to help you tremendously. And you're going to want to do this 
on all your sides. So at the side here, we're going to place some score tape. Okay, we're going to do it here, right there, at the edge. And we're going to do this on every edge going all the way around. And then we can burnish down the tape as soon as we get this all on. If you have any box imperfections, you shouldn't, but if you do, that's okay. Your, your pattern paper is going to cover up any of that. And again, you're not going to be able to see the black the way I'm teaching this. So it all gets covered and kind of all blends in the colors. So I'm all the way back around. And I'm going to burnish this down here. But I want to show you too, that's burnishing by the way, just kind of making sure that score tape has no air in it. We're going to be overlapping a lot of stuff, so just make sure you burnish down. So all your corners, here's the top, all your corners should have that score tape on it. The next thing you're going to want to do is lay a piece of score tape along the top all the way around. The rest we're going to be using glue. But the reason why I'm putting it in these key spots is, believe me, it is going to make your life easier when wrapping your pieces and less hassle, less chances for you to uh, just have a hard time. Okay. Alrighty, so if one of your 6x6 six six pieces are one that you want to be on the front, so your, your focal point, you might want to arrange your hole at this point to where it's oval longer this way. Or you can go this way. It's, it's up to you how you want to do this. But I'm going to show you here what's going to happen. This is six by six. I'm going to remove the score tape off from the top here. And I'm going to put glue along the edges and fill it in in here. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to bring this all the way to the bottom without going over of the cover. And I'm going to have equal overhang here. Okay? So don't wrap ahead of me. Let's do this together. And when you take off the score tape, you're going to want to take off this side, this side, and so forth. Off to the side for now. Hello. Nice sharp blade. There we go. I'm going to remove the score tape up here on this side for now. And I'll get the other here in a moment. Get that. There we go. Okay, so I'm working on this side. Here's my top. I'm going to move this mat out of the way. Okay, so here's bottom, here's top, and we'll do that. And I'm going to center that side to side. Oh wait, glue. We must have our glue. Gosh darn it. Glue would be very helpful to get this to stick in the middle. There's our glue. You can get down along the edges there. So again, here we go. Okay. So we're just going to smooth that out as best we can. Get our glue. Okay, here's the side now. We're just going to fold it over. And this is why the score tape is so helpful because you don't have to worry about the glue. So we're just going to fold that over. Don't do nothing with the top. I'll show you what to do there, but just get that folded over. And I got mine a little bit uneven, but that's okay because it doesn't matter. I have enough to come over the sides. Okay. Okay, so for the top here, you see how it overhangs? 
we're going to take our scissors and right here at the corner of the chipboard, the corner of our decorated paper, I am going to cut a slip to the chipboard on each side, just where that corner is. Whoops. Okay, so I'm a little shaky today. Just a corner in. So then what you're going to do is you're going to stand this upright. You see these little flaps you have? Just pull them in. Okay. Just pull those right in. Now you can get the top over. And over here, I'm going to fix what I just did there. Okay. So then you're just going to burnish that. And then what you can do is take this and run it along the top edge and it will sharpen up that side for you. So, so far this is what we have. Let's flip this around. We want the other side now. And we're going to remove this score tape backing. And we're going to add glue, not forget. <laughs> and once you get all your stuff, your paper down stuff, you can burnish again if you need to. So I'm directly on the opposite side now. This is my other 6x6 six six piece and it's going to be placed right there and trying to keep equal overhang. But first I do need to get my glue. Okay, so here's bottom, there's top, as you can see. So I'm going to line up my bottom here. Try to keep equal overhang on each. Okay. Put my hand in there. It's kind of easier to get some of that burnish down. Okay, the sides now. I'm just going to roll that over. And I'll burnish that here in a minute. And it doesn't matter if these are on crooked because they get covered up. Okay. Okay, we're looking at the top now. And in that corner, we're just going to snip. There's these little pieces. We're just going to come over. And one thing you might want to do too is on those corners is put a little bit of glue underneath that because we're going to need a little glue. So a little glue here, a little glue here. So when we fold this over, there's something. Burnish a little better. Okay, so right now this is what we have. What we want now is the five by six inch pieces. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna place that down just like this in between. And with this, we use our glue, unless you'd write, like to use score tape. Uh, I prefer score tape, but I'm gonna do this to make it very simple and less expensive using a bunch of score tape. Oh, up here at the top, you really don't need it because we do have that sticky up here. So we're just going to make sure we get enough. Okay. Now, over here, you might want to dot a little glue just right in here somewhere. Here's the top. Again, what we're going to do is center this side by side. It won't go over the sides. But we're going to bring it to the bottom. my hand in there to help it. Now we're just going to flop this over and again if you need to put a little glue up there that's a good idea. Just like that. So I'm going to get that burnished down and then I'm going to sharpen up this edge here by just going like that. Get my edges. 
and that's why I like uh, to use score tape over glue on certain applications. But glue will work just fine. Just make sure that you get your pieces burnished down on the edges. Okay, so there's this one. And this is our last 6 inch by 5 inch. See how simple this is? And once you've made one, you get it, and uh, you won't have any problems. Just take your time. Put a little glue there, put a little glue there. Here's my top, here's my bottom. Center that side to side. Okay, we're going to flip this over to the top now. Okay, so now what's going to happen, this is our top piece, okay, and when you lay this down it should be a nice fit, but notice we still have that hole in there, okay. What we're going to do on this, and, and I just had you do a circle in there with pencil as you can kind of see, so you're not going to cut that out. What you're going to do is go from edge to inner edge. And you don't have to be perfect, but we need to do several slits so that it's easier to wrap these edges to the inside. So I am just going to keep going here, making sure I have several slits for wrapping. So what we've created is something like this. And you'll just want to make sure that you create several. It'll be easier for wrapping. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're going to apply all our glue and we're even going to put glue on these little pieces here. And when we do that, we'll burnish it down and then we're going to be pulling these to the inside underneath. And that's where this came in because once we have all these down and tucked in, what you're going to have is a bunch of these on the inside and that's why I said for the underneath you can do this to help cover it. Okay, just make sure you get enough glue, get those edges down. Okay, and if you don't get these perfect uh, with glue on it, do not worry because you do have the other piece to help hold them down. I think I'm good enough. So I'm looking here where that oval is because we're a little wider this way than that way. So I'm going to look for the oval in this which way and that's easy to see. So now I'm just going to place this and I think I'll place this right like this. Make sure I'm even and do the best I can anyway. Get this burnished down before I pull it to the inside. Okay, it's time to start. So we're just going to flip these in, going around. And once you get your tissue in there, you're over your box and the tissue comes out, if you have any um, irregularities uh, in your oval, it's probably going to cover that up. And you're really not going to notice it. So I'm just going to keep going around. Okay, I'll just kind of... As you can see on the inside, that's what it looks like. So I'm just going to try to get those down better. So you should have an opening, something like this. Now all we need to do is look at your oval. We'll apply glue and we're going to stick that down. But first check yours to make sure that it looks good and it's going to fit. Now the reason why I didn't do this at a 5x5 five and I did it four and seven eighths. In case your hole is a little off centered, you have the opportunity to kind of move it over a little bit better. So it's time to get this last one on. And then I'll show you something else that you can do, like what I did on the lady one, that you can do on some of these tissue boxes. And it just adds a little more uh, to them. All right. Put that in there, and that should cover it up. So, in case somebody flips over, and you know, and that's what you want. Okay, it is time. 
to place this. And you can place this any way that you want. My front was this. So I'm just going to stick that in there, pull my tissue out, and voila, guess what? It looks perfect. It looks good. Now I'm going to show you something that you can do just to add a little something more. But on the lady one, notice how I have these corners done. And that is very simple. You would have had some scrap left over from your cuttings, like on this one. I just, all I did for that is I cut my first triangle and I kind of look to see if that's how I want it to look. So that looks really good, right? So now I use this as a pattern so I can get them all the same. And I'll show you. So there's two. I'm going to use this again. Oh, that looks like a bookmark, huh? And I'm going to cut, just lining it up. So now what you can do with your thing is you can actually bring in another color and put them in the corners. I think you can see this. I'm going to pull it closer for you. And it looks really good, too. So I'll bring this over so you can see right in the corners. So it kind of looks cool. Just like that. And I am going to continue to glue these down because I like that look. Okay, now all you have to do is burnish those pieces down to seam them up really nice. So now we have our tissue holder. Just like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And again, these are so simple. Just take it off. And when you want to put it on, just stick it in there. Pull out some tissue. Happy crafting, everybody. And I will see you on my next tutorial. See you soon.